<laughs> oh, hey, I didn't hear you come in. Uh, oh, my name is Ron, and uh, you may remember me as the guy you've never met before, but if you do, that's kind of weird. Anyway, I'm one of the newest employees here at Univideo Video Entertainment Systems, where, uh, <laughs> as per our mission statement, we are here to compete in the ever-expanding entertainment market, so we must offer our customers an entire universe of video selections. What that means is Univideo is digging deep, finding many lost and forgotten videos. And uh, it's my job, as the newly promoted uh, junior assistant intern's assistant, to make sure that I, along with the rest of the criticism department, have a review for each and every one of these uh, movies available on our website for you, our customer, to peruse at your leisure. So without any further ado, let's get to my very first review. Uh, I have some documentation here on it. Hold on. Uh, oh boy. Uh, I can't seem to find a title. Uh, oh, uh, it says here that it's uh, a children's film. Children's film, and uh, I see here that it is an animated film. Oh, that's great. There's so many great animated films from my youth that I just love. The adventure you're about to see is based on a true portrayal of outer space and could actually happen. This is great. I believe a children's film can tell a story that is still educational and uh, relevant to the modern age. And uh, on the workings of the cosmos, I believe it was the late, great Carl Sagan who said, And could actually happen to a puppet come alive. I'm sorry, to a puppet come alive? Wow. Oh, God, my ears! Oh, oh, oh. Huh. Really? Pinocchio in outer space, really? Really? In the little toy shop I'm not sure if this movie is insane or just Elaine Cashin trying to rip off the Disney film released 15 years earlier. If only there was a way to tell. Ah, there it is. A woefully generic song about what a good morning it is. Uninspired ripoff? Check. So, Pinocchio in outer space. <laughs> Yeah, I'm afraid they're 100% serious. The famous Italian puppet turned real boy returns, this time with a rocket ship. But, but I'm getting ahead of myself. We start off in titular outer space, where a pair of stellar exposition fairies explain that the most shamefully Aryan Pinocchio ever depicted, famous for being turned from a puppet into a real boy, has been turned back into a puppet again for generally acting like a little shit. So. After weeks of intense brainstorming, the writers came up with the stunningly original premise that in order to become a real boy again, he must prove his worthiness by performing a selfless deed. Again. Uh, but this time it's in space. In space. So we're to understand that this is something of an unofficial sequel, which is what makes this next scene all the more confusing. We interrupt this program to bring you a special bulletin. Yes, that's right. Apparently, Pinocchio and Geppetto own a television set, despite the fact that he's a poor toy maker, and even more amazingly because their original adventures took place somewhere around the late 1800s. But that isn't even the most shocking part. The newest man-made satellite, Cosmos 2, launched earlier this evening, has been demolished, smashed into rubble by Astro, the rogue whale in outer space. A space whale? Space Whale? Is that the best they could come up with? Come on! Oh, and huh, the name, Astro. <laughs> Get it? Because it sounds like Monstro, but has a little outer spacey twist. Strange times, Pinocchio. Not strange so much as just lazy. I mean, come on, movie, decide now. Are you a sequel or are you a remake? Movies made today don't have this problem. Oh, I, I stand corrected. In the toy shop, 
Pinocchio complains how much he hates school and laments having to do his boring homework, which, you guessed it, is all about outer space. I wish school were a million billion miles away. Instead, he whines that he wants to go into outer space to catch the improbable space whale himself. So wait, he thinks outer space is boring and stupid, but he can't wait to get there himself. What a confused young man, uh, puppet. Geppetto tells him to stay focused on his education, and since the movie was made in the 60s, he grasps hilariously onto the dated belief that futuristic scientific advancement is just around the corner. You're young, son. You'll probably see interplanetary travel in your lifetime. Ha! It's funny because it's more than 50 years later and humanity still sucks. Interplanetary travel? What a pipe dream. We don't even have Jetsony flying cars or food in pill form or weird retro -y robotic kitchens that make the food themselves. People don't even wear weird hula hoopy rings around themselves. Geppetto sees Pinocchio off to school the next morning and gives him a quarter to buy lunch. Hey, yes, son, take this. A quarter? Hey, take it. You need it to buy lunch at school. Which is funny for two reasons. One, because the notion of purchasing an entire meal for a quarter is pretty amusing. And number two, Pinocchio is a puppet. Puppets don't eat. So Geppetto is putting himself through undue hardship for no reason. Now don't you worry about me. I have plenty to eat. Why, there's a piece of cheese left over from supper and a piece of brown bread. More than enough for an old man. Weird. So off he skips to school, his testicles shrinking into his body as he begins to sing one of the most unambitious, hastily written songs to ever make it into the final cut of a movie. <laughs> It's a goody good morning and a goody good day. It's a happy dappy dippy daffy lullaby dappy doozy all the way. Real subtle, guys. <laughs> this totally isn't Song of the South zippity doo dah. The lyrics are so inspired that even the animals don't want anything to do with this musical number. Kind of crazy, yes, the daisy too. <laughs> Pinocchio runs into a pair of anthropomorphic scam artists who convince him to buy a pamphlet that will teach him how to hypnotize Astro. The cost? Only Pinocchio's quarter and another awful song. By doing the impossible, doing the impossible, though it takes a little time. Doing the impossible never is impossible once you make up your mind. Ugh! Skip, skip. Man. Pinocchio must really be skipping a lot of school if he thinks that's a reasonable plan. Even if it could work, how does Pinocchio expect to get into outer space to even get a chance to fail and be eaten by the whale? Again. But luckily for him, the movie's called Pinocchio in Outer Space, so he doesn't have to worry about figuring out a plan of his own to get there, since it's a surety will from the title. Suddenly out of nowhere, the shadow of... Uh, Astro, the space whale. After preparing for this moment, Pinocchio heroically runs and dumps his pants in mortal terror. But no, it's not really the whale. We're not lucky enough to have that speedy of a resolution. Instead, it's a spaceship landing on Earth containing the next jaw-droppingly unsubtle ripoff in this unstoppable celluloid ripoff parade. This guy seem familiar to you? <laughs> yeah, that's right, another Disney ripoff. What? You don't recognize him? For our younger customers out there who've been too busy texting or updating their Facebook page to have ever sat down and watched a real cartoon in their lives, they may not be familiar with Disney's 1945 Three Caballeros. This is Jose Carioca, who, joined with Panchito Pistoles, generally whoop it up alongside Donald Duck in a mildly racist, South American-themed animation and live-action musical spectacular. I can't be the only one who sees the resemblance. Three Caballeros was released five years after Disney's Pinocchio. This is Nurtle. Not a bird, but a turtle. Turtle? Turtle? Do I look like a turtle? Well... I am a turtle, as different from turtles as kittens are from the mighty lion. If you had a brain in that wooden head, you'd recognize the difference at once. Are you from another planet? Certainly. The purple planet, Turtle D, west of Turtle Dumb. Ugh. Anyway. Turns out Nurtle is supposed to be investigating Mars, but must have taken a wrong turn back at Albuquerque. 
I'm not a Martian. Not a... Of course you're a Martian. What would you be doing on Mars if you weren't a Martian, silly? This isn't Mars. Oh, well, that's different if this isn't Mars. Not Mars! No, sir. This is Earth. Earth? Oh, nonsense. You must be mistaken. I don't think so. Look, it's right here in my science book. Let me see that. Earth, third planet from the sun. Third from the sun! of a screw up do you have to be to mix that up? Even those aliens landed on the right damn planet. You know, I, I, I thought this planet looked rather blue for the red planet Mars. Ladies and gentlemen, our protagonists. Can you keep a secret? I am Special Agent TV-8. The chief of our Central Intelligence sent me to check up on stories of another highly advanced civilization. On Mars? My mission is to investigate strange radiation, atomic activity on a planet presumed to be lifeless. Oh, say, I'm running way behind schedule. I better go. So long, Pinocchio. I'll see you around. Hmm? Pinocchio is supposed to be at some sort of moral crossroads here. He struggles to decide whether to accompany Nurdle or go straight to school like he promised his father. So he has one of those cliche cartoon conscience moments where his good and evil sides come out as an angel and a devil to try and persuade him one way or the other. Now is it just me or shouldn't this make the decision easier? Who takes advice from a guy in a devil suit? Seems like a no-brainer to me. I can hypnotize him! So, our two heroes head off for Mars. Hmm, there's Mars, dead ahead. Wow, she's really red, isn't she? She. Mars being called a she. The very planet and symbol which stand for masculinity. What's going on here? Two moons! Look! Yep, two moons, all right. The one on the left is Phobos, the other is Deimos. Oh, man. How different a movie would it be if they landed there instead? <laughs> no, instead, once they land, Nurdle begins awkwardly hitting on Pinocchio. Two moons, what a spot for romance. Ever see anything more lovable? Pinocchio actually seems kind of into it, too. I guess it wouldn't really be pedophilia since he's a puppet, and there wouldn't be any witnesses in space. No one can hear you scream and all that. Nurdle seems a much more sinister character now. Come to think of it, why would you invite a child along on your business trip? The trouble with you is you think everything in outer space is hostile. Pinocchio and Nurdle explore the planet, only to discover that their ship has gone missing, when, out of nowhere, the movie decides to get cool. There's some minor. My only question is, why did they wait until more than halfway through the movie to introduce the awesome monsters? I wish I could have been the one responsible for budgeting this movie, so I could have reassigned all the money funding the dreadful music numbers into the badass space monster scenes. <laughs> They escape and begin to explore the ruins of a futuristic city. Ursa Minor, what could have hit this place? Strange radiation. It's coming from the building directly below us. Hold on, we're going down. They land and immediately rush to put their bodily health at risk. Listen to this radiation counter. The place is a hotbed of strange atomic activity. Underground chambers. Must be atomic machinery, reactors and such. So what do they do? They ignore the hair and teeth falling out of their body and run down there. There's only one way to find out. Ah, I see they have the machine that goes boo We don't even have machines this complicated on Twirtle B. Oh wait, did I say complicated? <laughs> I meant stupid. We don't have machines this stupid. Anyways, they continue further in and find pits of animals being experimented on. 
Oh, fall in. Fall in. Please fall in and become the movie of my dreams. There's something moving back there in the shadows. But I can't quite make it. <laughs> Giant monsters start popping out of everywhere. But just when you think the movie's going to get exciting, instead of fighting or tricking the monsters, Pinocchio and Nerdle just run away so they can talk more science. And I'll tell you something else. I have a hunch about those brutes. I think that at one time they were all small, but something in their food is making them giants. Man, who doesn't have their seatbelt buckled? That's it, all right. These creatures are being fed a radioactive diet, probably to increase the rate at which they mutate into giants. <laughs> Did I say talk science? I meant crazy Stan Lee, Jack Kirby superpower giving science. Mutate? Yes, a mutated animal is one that looks different in some way from all the others like him. Yeah, all the others who used to be like him, that it, or rather, that he used to be like. Well, he's different. Yeah, different. Different like a high school boy just yearning to be himself. Pinocchio and Nerdle discuss what must have destroyed the Martians. I'll bet I still got mad at being cooped up and escaped and turned on his masters and destroyed the Martian city and all the Martians. <laughs> oh, that's the silliest thing I ever heard. No. You know what probably killed them off? Being exposed to unfiltered radiation every moment of their lives. Just like it's going to kill Nerdle and, well, probably not deadly to a puppet will certainly make everybody else back on Earth he visits deathly ill from radiation contamination. Blocked! Blocked with sand! Then, for no reason whatsoever, the place begins to collapse, and the duo must flee for their lives from a host of other giant monsters, including a Balrogosaurus, where they dramatically lose their stalwart wizard companion, Gandalf. No! Once they make it to Rohan, <laughs> I mean the surface, they find that their ship is being buried by a sandstorm. They get in, blast off, and once again for no real reason, the city blows up in a huge atomic explosion. Real sensitive producers, exposing your audience to a horrific atomic explosion only four years after the Bay of Pigs incident, an incident which almost prompted the nuclear destruction of the entire world as we know it today. Nice. Whoa! No sooner do they get into outer space, they come face to face with Astro and... It isn't an asteroid! It's heroically shriek like infants and are swallowed whole. Inside the space whale, Pinocchio laments his failure. It's all my fault. I should have recognized Astro from his pictures on television. Nonsense. They try to come up with a plan to escape. I wish I knew a way out, but I've never been inside a whale before. Father and I once escaped from inside a whale. You did? How? We went out the way we came in. The whale slept with his mouth open. No, no, that's no good. Astro sleeps with his big mouth shut. And now is finally when Pinocchio gets his moment to shine. He digs deep into himself, applying all the knowledge gained throughout his unusual life to come up with an ingenious plan that only succeeds due to his unwavering bravery and faith in his friends. Not really. Actually, what he does is he begs his omnipotent guardian angel, the Blue Fairy, to bail him out again. Her advice? Just fly out of a different hole, dummy. Oh, no. They aren't flying through his... Oh, are they? Oh, that's disgusting. I thought this was supposed to be a children's movie. Ugh. Yuck. Pinocchio, we're out! Hooray! We're safe! We're out! They escape, but in doing so, bent the tail fin of Nurdle's spaceship. They attempt to flee the pursuing whale, but due to their bent tail fin, can't control themselves as they fly in a spiral pattern. Yes, that's right. The aerodynamics of the bent tail fin are causing them to twirl out of control in the vacuum of space, where there is no aero 
to affect their dynamics. The adventure you're about to see is based on a true portrayal of outer space. Bullshit! And wouldn't you know it, the circling spaceship mesmerizes the space whale into a hypnotic trance. Thanks to an observing astronomer, newspapers all over the world anticipate the return of the two successful heroes on their front pages, complete with photographs, which they couldn't possibly have since Nerdle only landed for a few minutes and only talked to Pinocchio. Back in space, Astro is speeding towards Earth at an amazing pace, threatening to crash into the Earth, eradicating all life. Pinocchio tethers himself and flies over to the whale in a desperate attempt to stop the space beast and is bathed in fire and, though bearing no burns or scorches, is presumably killed. Back on Earth, everyone mourns over Pinocchio's corpse in his bed. I mean, I guess it might have been a bit insensitive to bury him in a wooden casket, but it's not like he's really going to decay and stink the place up, so yeah, why not just keep his lifeless body around? But really, doesn't anyone remember this already happened once before? Really, nobody remembers that the Blue Fairy brought him back to life after a situation remarkably like this. <laughs> Guess not, because everyone is amazed when the Blue Fairy brings Pinocchio back to life and makes him a real boy again. Anyways, Astro is turned into a Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade balloon, Geppetto becomes the Parker Brothers Monopoly Man, and Pinocchio says goodbye to his alien turtle friend. For Pinocchio, this is not the end. Yes, yes it is. He's done. It's over. He couldn't possibly get turned back into a puppet and then back into a real boy again. Unless the fairies are playing some sort of cruel game where they can see how many times they can trick Pinocchio into killing himself just to bring him back to life so they can do it again. Ooh, creepy. So that's Pinocchio in Outer Space, a boring, uneventful, confused piece of animation that's more dated than a carton of milk. Okay, before I wrap up today's show, I just want to read one piece of viewer mail. Our letter today comes from Andrew Racho of Los Angeles, California. He writes, Dear Ron, how do you expect us to believe that someone could write a letter for a show that's only just premiered? I guess I don't. But don't let that stop you from writing me in the future. But until then, I'm Ron Caruso of the other section saying, I don't have a clever catchphrase yet. Goodbye. Double mushroom. It's so bright, so vivid. A double mushroom all the way across the sky. Woo hoo hoo! Woo! -hoo. It's so beautiful. What does it mean?